Hello and welcome back to Bombchu. My name is Chris, and today I'll be taking a look at Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. Now, I don't want to spoil any moments or major set pieces in the game. There's some really great stuff that I'm glad didn't get revealed to me ahead of time, so I'll be lumping all the spoiler talk together at the end of the video with plenty of warning before I go into it. I was a huge fan of Bethesda and Machine Games' first take on Wolfenstein with 2014's The New Order, especially what they had done with the character of BJ Blazkowicz. They had taken a character that used to be little more than a face at the bottom of the screen and turned him into a deep emotional character that made me care more about him than I had any other first-person shooter protagonist in years. One of my favorite elements of the game was BJ's inner monologue, giving us a deeper look at the man behind the face that Nazis fear. Thought I'd seen it all, but I've never seen true cruelty. The New Order also ended on such a somber and emotional note, with BJ suffering life-threatening injuries and a nuke ready to go off at any moment, that I wasn't sure where they could go from there. The New Colossus picks up exactly where the New Order ends, with BJ's fellow Resistance members swooping in to save him at the last minute. Immediately, we can tell that Blazkowicz has been changed by his time in combat, and this becomes one of the most intriguing and interesting parts of the story. This isn't the same gung-ho, invincible, Nazi-killing machine that we've grown used to. Blazkowicz has been beaten down, scarred both mentally and physically, and the decades of fighting like a one-man army has finally caught up with him. His inner monologue now reveals a man battling a deep depression. He can tell that his body is giving up and he's not sure what to do about it. His mind wants to keep fighting, but he can only do so much to fight a failing body. And the great warmth washing over me. I think the sky's on fire. Caroline, he's dying! He's turning blue! we'll need a at the gates again. Howling my name. Come on in, old buddy. Sorry I made you wait. This part of the story is so amazingly well written, and the voice actor for Blazkowicz just absolutely nails the character once again. It feels like you're being shown a window directly into his psyche, and it's such a raw and powerful look at the character. My hat's off to Brian Bloom, as he has once again delivered a stellar performance as Blazkowicz. Mother, am I acquitted? Was I righteous and just? good enough to witness the awe of heaven. The story goes through a lot of the same basic beats as the previous game. Introduce the villain, give the player a reason to hate them, gather allies and supplies, then begin the fight back. The main villain this time around is Frau Engel, disfigured and on a mad hunt for Blaskowitz after their last encounter during the New Order. The rest of the cast is filled out nicely, with all the familiar faces you grew to love over the course of the last game, as well as some really great and memorable new characters as well. One, two, three. The story isn't without fault, however. About two-thirds of the way through the story, the game seems to start dashing towards the finish line, and it starts to waste all that tension it had built up so far. The finale of the game definitely feels rushed, as the final boss moment seems to slip by without you realizing it, and before you know it, credits are rolling. That's not to say the story is bad, or that the ending isn't satisfying. I just wish that they had a more well-balanced story from start to finish. Of course, it wouldn't be Wolfenstein if you weren't killing every Nazi in sight, and the new Colossus gives you plenty of tools to do so. You're given a variety of weapons and abilities, some new and some old, all designed for killing your enemies in the most satisfying way possible. Dual wielding still seems to be the route they expect most players to take, and it's easy to see why. There's nothing quite as satisfying as dual wielding two giant triple-barreled shotguns and making your own path through a field of Nazis. Stealth is still a viable option, but it's much harder to pull off than it was in the previous game. Enemies are much better at spotting you, and enemy patrol routes are often harder to predict. You have a variety of perks you can earn by completing different in-game challenges. You can also unlock upgrades for each weapon, further allowing you to customize the game to your preferred style of play. The game also includes some new abilities for BJ to acquire, and lots of collectibles to find, including plenty of funny and well-written news clippings and letters, detailing the daily lives of people living under Nazi rule. You're going to need all the weapons, abilities, and upgrades you can get, because this game is really hard. While I occasionally enjoy a game that offers a tough challenge, I'm usually the type of person who turns the difficulty down to a lower setting so I can relax, feel powerful, and really enjoy the story. However, even on one of the lower difficulty settings, I found myself dying more often than I thought I would. The new Colossus holds your hand as little as possible, and it can be pretty brutal, especially if you're used to the comforts of most modern shooters. For example, players aren't given any real indication of where damage they receive is coming from, and there's no real alert for when your health is getting dangerously low either. There were quite a few times where I would be mowing down wave after wave of Nazi without realizing that my health was dropping fast because I was just standing out in the open. Wolfenstein expects you to be almost constantly moving during a firefight. 
when you enter a new area with enemy patrols and commanders ready to call for backup. If you aren't going to try for stealth, you need to be running from room to room, stopping only for short bursts to reload or pick up some health and ammo, before moving on to the next group of Nazis. It's not quite as fast-paced and frantic as last year's Doom, but the combat does have a very similar style and feel to it, and it's just as satisfying in my opinion. I did run into a few small issues while playing the game. Health and ammo drops can be really hard to pick up or even spot, especially if you're in the middle of a shootout. Oftentimes I would be running down a hallway and see the icon for a health pack show up for a split second, only for me to spend the next 30 seconds doing circles around a room trying to find exactly where that health pack was. I also found myself getting stuck in the geometry of the level a few times. It always seemed to happen with odd shaped pieces of terrain, like a half destroyed building or between a bunch of rocks and a car, and it only happened maybe three or four times throughout the entire game. However, these annoyances were minor at worst. If some wonky level geometry and hard to spot pickups are all I have to deal with in the modern era of release now patch later, I think I'll be okay. Alright, here's where I'm going to get into spoiler territory. I'm not going to get too specific for anything, but I will spoil the intro sequence a bit, as well as some info on a story sequence later in the game. If you plan on playing this game and want the pure experience, I suggest skipping ahead to the time marked here to see my final thoughts on the game. As I said before, the story is where this game really shines for me, and the new Colossus is full of so many amazing moments. Early on, a close friend is executed at the hands of Frau Engel. The scene was incredibly brutal and pretty disturbing, even for a hardened internet vet like myself. The death also sets up BJ's mental state perfectly, as that combined with his poor physical state sets him down the dark road of depression and borderline nihilism at times. Within the first hour, BJ has already changed from a man leading the charge against the Nazi war machine to a crippled war veteran who is tired of fighting and ready to die. Some of the best scenes for me were the flashbacks to BJ's childhood, both in the beginning and during a side trip back to his family farm. It's here where we get to see what turned Billy into BJ Blazkowicz, and it's handled with such finesse. We get to see BJ's horrible, abusive, racist father and how bad he treats his family. We get a look at different events throughout BJ's childhood that would eventually shape him into the man we see today. I will not, will not let you hurt my son. You shut your damn mouth, or shut it for you. <coughs> what is it with you damn Jews? Have all the answers, do you? The whole farmhouse sequel is written so well and punctuated so perfectly. When we get the reveal of what happened to his family after he left to join the army, it was such a punch to the gut and a perfect end note to an emotionally charged sequence. If you can't raise a boy right, I'll do it for you. Overall, I loved the new Colossus. Bethesda and Machine Games continue to amaze and impress by offering some of the most well-written, emotional, and visceral storytelling in the history of the first-person shooter genre. The game is brutally violent, but it never crosses the line into exploitation. Every moment of brutality and cruelty is earned and well executed. Running around shooting Nazis is a blast, and the game looks really great too. Sure, the game might trip over itself every now and then, but it's never enough to spoil the overall experience. Whether you're a fan of the previous games or are new to the series, I very highly recommend Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus.